In this module, you will learn about the operational risk and Basel Committee recommendations. We will cover the seven types of operational risks. Losses by baseline versus losses by event type, operational risk management stages, and operational risk qualification framework. Let's delve into it, shall we? In order to collect and organize data, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision recommends that operational losses are estimated per different banking business lines and types of risk, known as risk events. The eight business lines include retail banking, commercial banking, trading and sales, retail brokerage, corporate finance, agency services, payment and settlement, and asset management. The Basel II detailed description of seven types of operational risk. Internal fraud, external fraud, employment practices and workplace safety, clients, products and business practices, damage to physical assets, business disruption and system failures and execution, delivery and process management. Internal fraud is defined as losses due to acts intended to defraud, misappropriate property, or circumvent regulations, the law, or company policy, excluding diversity or discrimination events, which involve at least one internal party. This may include unauthorized activities, such as intentionally not reported transactions, and intentionally mismarking of position, or theft and fraud, such as credit fraud worthless deposits theft, extortion, embezzlement or robbery, misappropriation of assets, malicious destruction of assets, forgery, check kitting, smuggling, account takeover, impersonation, etc. It may also include tax non-compliance, evasion, willful bribes, or kickbacks, insider trading, not on firms' accounts. External fraud is defined as losses due to acts of a type intended to defraud, misappropriate property, or circumvent the law by a third party. This may include theft and fraud, such as theft, robbery, or forgery check kidding. Additionally, there is the risk of system security, such as hacking or theft of information with monetary loss. Employment practices and workplace safety is a risk which defined as losses arising from acts inconsistent with employment, health or safety laws or agreements, from payment of personal injury claims, or from diversity and discrimination events. This risk may occur from employee relations, such as theft, robbery, or forgery check kitting. A safe environment risk may occur as a general liability, employee health and safety rule events, which lead to workers' compensation. This type of event may also include diversity and discrimination of any type. Clients, products, and business practices. This risk is all about losses arising from an unintentional or negligent failure to meet a professional obligation to specific clients, including fiduciary and suitability requirements, or from the nature or design of a product. This risk may include suitability, disclosure, and fiduciary, such as fiduciary breaches, guideline violations, suitability, disclosure issues, retail customer disclosure violations, breach of privacy, aggressive sales, account churning, misuse of confidential information, and lender liability. Improper business or market practices, such as antitrust, improper trade or market practices, market manipulation, insider trading on firm's account, unlicensed activity and money laundering. As product flaws, it may be product defects or model errors. An example of selection, sponsorship and exposure event. There could be a failure to investigate client per guidelines or exceeding client exposure limits. Lastly, there could be disputes over performance of advisory activities. Damage to physical assets is defined as losses arising from loss or damage to physical assets, from natural disaster 
or other events. This may include natural disaster losses or human losses from external sources, such as terrorism or vandalism. The risk of business disruption and system failures is about losses arising from disruption of business or system failures. Usually failure of hardware, software, telecommunications or utility outage and disruptions. The last operational risk is execution, delivery and process management. This risk may cause losses from failed transaction processing or process management from relations with trade counterparties and vendors. This risk may occur in six categories. 1. Transactions capture, execution and maintenance such as miscommunication, data entry, maintenance or loading error, missed deadline or responsibility, model or system misoperation, accounting error, entity attribution error or other task misperformance, delivery failure, collateral management failure and reference date maintenance. 2. Failed mandatory reporting obligation or inaccurate external report. 3. Customer intake and documentation, where client permissions or disclaimers missing legal documents. Customer and client account management, such as unapproved access given to accounts, incorrect client records, loss incurred, negligent loss or dame of client assets. 5. Trade counterparties, where misperformance or miscellaneous. Non-client counterparty disputes may occur. 6. Vendor and suppliers may occur when outsourcing or by vendor disputes. Operational risk events can be based on frequency and impact, with management efforts usually focused on two types of events. Recurrent smaller risks and higher severity of low frequency events. As you can see, events that repeat frequently and have high impact would definitely be business threatening. Loss frequencies by business line and event type are fairly consistent across each of the loss default collection exercises conducted by G10 financial services, regulatory authorities and BIS. The figure describes the loss frequency by business line across three LDCEs. Here you can see the loss frequency by event type across three LDCEs. There is, however, volatility in the experienced loss severities due to certain one-time shocks. For example, September 11th terrorist attacks, Enron collapse. The following figure describes the loss severity by business line across three LDCEs. This figure shows the loss severity by event type across three LDCEs. The following chart shows some common examples of operational risks. When a bank teller creates way of transferring funds to someone's account, the impact on the bank losses may be high. Another high risk is when a company forges documentation in order to gain a loan. Workmen's compensation regarding workplace safety may have a medium impact. In a loan secondary marketing transaction, a company can fail to deliver collateral on time and hence incurs a penalty fee. Another example of medium impacts is due to internal IT failure that may result in additional payment to vendors. Operational risk management occurs along several maturity stages of development, with this stage building on the previous one's capabilities, applied methods and deployed tools. In the integrate development stage, we need to achieve full linked set of tools, cross-function risk analysis, correlate between indicators and losses, insurance linked with risk analysis and capital, and risk-adjusted returns linked. Sample of best practices and tools at this stage could be integration measures, management corrective actions, Six Sigma, 
Integration with Quality and Cost Management In the quantify development stage, we need to comprehend lost database, set quantitative goals for improvement, predict analysis and leading indicators, risk-based economic models, and active operational committee. Sample of best practices and tools at this stage could be lost data gathering, capital modeling using expected and unexpected lost data, and insurance coverage. In the monitor development stage, we aim to achieve clear vision goals for operational risk management, comprehensive indicators, escalation triggers, consolidated reporting, continuous self-assessment, dedicated business line staff, and implement training. Sample key risk indicators at this stage could be periodic and real-time. In the awareness development stage, we need to establish operator risk manager, governance structure, definition, policy, process maps, self-assessment, early indicators, begin collection and toe down economic capital models, sample of process and risk maps, process and controls mapping and risk mapping, sample of self-assessment could be qualitative analysis of operational risks or effectiveness evaluation of operational controls. Traditional baseline is comprised of internal controls, reliance on internal audit, individual mitigation programs, and reliance on quality of people and culture. With risk being described as a measurement of uncertainty surrounding an event, not surprisingly, risk quantification is of paramount importance in operational risk management. For now, it suffices to say that the process of operational risk quantification can be divided into four major steps. Loss database, distribution modelling, loss simulation, and capital calculation. In this module, we have discussed about operational losses and types of risk, losses by baseline versus losses by event type, operational risk management stages, and operational risk quantification framework. You have completed this module about operational risks and Basel Committee recommendations. We hope you find this information useful. You may repeat this module if required. Thank you, and have a great day.